for life. Got you it. Were, okay. Like, we were like, well, <laughs> but also it was more so, dangerous. I, I see me getting here, bro. That's been coming as dangerous now. <laughs> there were cultural yeah. differences, too, in terms of what people ate. Yeah. And people in colder climates didn't have a choice. They yeah. had to eat meat. But people in warm climates actually, you know, didn't need to eat meat because they had abundance in fruit, vegetables, grains, the things that really keep us healthy. Yeah. But anyway, I'm going to stop because it is time. Oh, we had a new person who came in. Yes. We passed this around. Everybody who's in here, except you, because mm -hmm. I already know him. I said, I'm my little person. Um, but please put your name and email so that we can share any handouts with you. Um, and just briefly for the two people who didn't get to share your name um, while you're here. I'm going to have uh, him come up and speak because he's one of our authors. So I'm going to have him give a, you know, talk about his book. Um, okay. But um, Marcus, did you want to go ahead and, and introduce yourself? Yeah. My name is Marcus Harry. Um, I'm sure my son. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just wanted to, I'm also a friend of Darrell, and I wanted to come and see what his uh, workshop is about and everything. I'm just truly just sponging it up right now, just trying to get into a whole new side of life. You know, okay. like, you know well, trying to try to broaden, broaden That's my good. Yeah. Knowledge is the best. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I said, uh, sponge. Who's being the sponge? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Well, this is the perfect place for us to be. Oh, there's going to be plenty to suck up tonight. Trust that. So for those who okay. don't know me, um, pretty sure everybody here knows me. Um, my name is Dale Slade, and I am the CEO of No More Suits LLC. No More Suits is a publishing company that I started back in 2018 because I self-published my book. The Alarm Clock and Book of Rhymes, but I didn't have education, real education on how to publish my book, how to own my copyrights, how to establish an ISBN, how to have a book workshop. I didn't have anybody who could plug me in to give me that platform to really break and dissect the philosophy of my book and why I wrote it. Um, so I wanted to create that not only for myself, but for a community of people. Um, I was just at the public library um, earlier this week, and a lady came up to me. She seen me working on the website. I was actually up, um, working on uploading your book um, to the page, and she said, "What page is that?" And I told her, like, I, I was speaking of it from like I was a, a customer, not the owner of the company. And I told her, you know, it's no more Sewell's Publishing Company. And she said, "Man, I got so many poems that I wrote." I don't even know how to get started with it. And it was just like a real moment because it's like, those are the people who I'm looking to help, you know? And so we're small now, but we're big in consciousness. And so um, the purpose of this book workshop was um, my cousin reached out to me, Ayo Maria. She um, <coughs> is from Pennsylvania, the Philadelphia area, her and her family. And um, she's actually speaking tomorrow at Dudley's and she asked if we could do a book workshop and it falls right in line with the mission and the goal and the platform for No More Suits. So I felt like it was a perfect opportunity. We just came into 2020. Um, it's a whole new decade. This is the third decade in the 21st century, the second fifth of the 21st century. Things are changing. The climate is changing. You know, we're moving more to a digital age. We were just talking about it earlier. And publishing is going to be the future of technology, and it's going to go hand in hand. Um, I could ramble all day, but what I want to do now is I want to uh, give one of our affiliate authors uh, the floor. Um, he just dropped his book. It's called Wealth Over Riches. Um, his name is Will Thomas. And uh, I just think that the message that he's giving out through his literature ties into everything else that we got going on. So without further ado, I'm going to give you the floor. And after that, you can do the introductions. Okay. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be real brief. I'm from Charlotte. I just drove up the road a 
come support my brother, my frat brother. Um, knew him for a couple years, and we chopped it up. And I, I'm all for, I always with the, the movement before I even wrote my book. But um, I'm an IT engineer by, by trade. That's my, my job. Um, I have a travel business on the side, so that's what I do. And I don't want to do it big. I just kind of do it for friends. If you hit me up, like, hey, I get a little commission. And sometimes I give the commission back or like a part of the commission. But um, I feel like God put it on me because I just done so well financially without no blueprint. Like before I start reading financial books, I just, I just, I was just, I just had that conscious mind. Then uh, along with that, marrying who I married, we just kind of fit together and it just, it worked out. And then this past year, I just got really heavy into reading. So I read like Dave Ramsey, a couple other financial books, but then I didn't really, they were, they were good stuff. A lot of people in America believes in like that plan, that plan. but I just, like my own self, I, it was kind of the same, but I had my own different viewpoints on it. And I felt like people who were giving financial advice would say, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, or had it, or other stuff was just real estate. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of took um, my own thoughts and then mixed it up with the books. And my, the main purpose behind my book is trying to get people to understand the financial literacy, but also trying to get them to get in, um, in, um, encouraged by our continued education. Um, that's the biggest thing. Like the, In my book, I would say, don't just read my book, but read the books that I read so you can get your own perspective. Because everybody's financial situation is different, and everybody's gonna have a different plan. So um, that's the main gist of why I wrote the book and the uh, background behind it. But in my book, I use personal experience. Um, I try to be real. I, I try to put myself into the book, and let, I like I, at the end of the book, I have my own goals. I have a plan that I follow to to wealth and start building wealth and getting rid of debt. But then I give you the overall picture of how to pay off debt, how to change your mind about money and how to change from a consumer to more of an um, investor because that's the real way to build wealth. Like, you gotta stop spending money. Because if you don't have nothing in your bank, you can't invest in it, nothing anyway. No matter, unless you're gonna do it with debt. And that's not, I don't believe in debt to build wealth or whatever. That's just my personal belief. Everybody has their own uh, ways of, of playing with risk. But my main thing is if you're playing with risk, it's a daily game. So it's better to have your own capital going to a business venture. But I kind of give you that full plan from paying off debt, which is escaping the paycheck to paycheck uh, cycle, because that's what most of the debt is in. People have debt, and that keeps them being paycheck to paycheck. So once you get rid of that, then you can start exploring real ways of building wealth. And, it, and you don't have to be in real estate. You don't have to have your own business to build wealth. A lot of people don't know that. You simply can just open up an IRA or a brokerage account and put money in index funds. And if you start at 20, if you're doing like 10% of your salary, you can be a millionaire depending on how the market goes. And a lot of people don't know that information. And I had a lot of friends ask me, like, how am I going to, tra- how I'm traveling and still doing good? And it's because I make sacrifices. And like the last 10 years of my life, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't do. Like, I wouldn't go to concerts, but I see my friends not making as much money as I am, going to concerts, going to party every weekend. So I talk about that in the book a lot, about like everything's a, a sacrifice and you have to really sacrifice to get where you want to go. And the bigger picture is when you die, do you want to leave something for your kids? Or like my father-in-law says, do you want to leave chicken money? So that's how the book kind of starts off. It's, it's the main goal. And once you have that main goal, you can kind of align with that. So that's what my book is about. Appreciate it. Um, before we get started, I got like a gift for everybody. This is called the Lotus Oil. It came directly from Kimmy. The lady just opened it up. It has not been opened in the States until yesterday. I was watching the lady unwrap it as I was getting it. Um, but the lotus oil, um, it, it goes back to our ancestors and you know our ancient philosophy. So the lotus plant represents all four signs in nature. Earth, fire, water, and air. Um, and so, because the plant, it grows in the water and then it rises up towards the sun, and then it represents the mineral, the plant, the animal animal domain, and it has a nice aroma to it. So the lady told me you're supposed to rub it on like this, and then rub it in like this. So I think it'd be um, really good if we all kind of embrace that smell as we go into our presentations and things like that. So I'm gonna just pass this around. Um, I need it back though, because this is... <laughs> <laughs> don't keep it. <laughs> you don't want to rub no more? Okay. Because I already got perfume on. I got you. I got you. Mm-hmm. Big, big bag. Yeah. Yeah. 
Before we start, if I may, um, do an introduction myself. We have a very special person in the room, um, Amber, yeah. <laughs> Amber Baker, who is running for state rep in District 72. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we need people to get the vote out, even if you're not in that district, mm -hmm. to get people out, call people you know, <laughs> Instagram, et cetera, because we need to have someone who cares about us doing the business that other people won't do. Mm -hmm. And so this is uh, Amber Baker right here in front of you. Dr. Baker is a longtime principal and educator involved in, uh, maybe everybody knows her, you no. all know her already? Mm -mm. Okay, no. just check. No. Okay, so. I like you. Oh, yeah. I'm working with the team. Yeah. So I'm actually Amber, overdressed because I want to come in. Not and overdressed. You look beautiful because well, you're a queen. You. You're supposed to thank look like you. that. Well, I, I want to come and show some love. Uh, Courtney is my nephew, and Maria is my cousin, and I want to show some love. You know, I am. Let me do this thing. Um, <laughs> and to support uh, what you guys are doing. Um, you know, independent wealth frees us to make decisions that we might not be able to do if we're just hindered by receiving a paycheck. Um, the most important thing, I just left a room of about 60 students that came up from Clemson. What I'll say is, people like to say I'm smart, but I, you know, what I say is I'm well read. And that, you know, read things that interest you, but read things that don't interest you. You know, watch um, TV and learn about stuff that you don't know what you're going to do with the information. But when you find yourself in a room, um, you'll find that you'll be able to make a connection with a person that you wouldn't have otherwise been able to make that connection because of your limited exposure to this information. And so the reason that I'm choosing to run for House Seat 72 is many of you know Derwin Montgomery. Derwin has decided to run for Congress, so it leaves his seat open. And I have already been engaged in the work in the community. I've been at Kimberly Park for 12 years. Um, and just in my role as a principal, have been doing community organizing and uh, reconnecting and helping people to re-entry, re-enter, you know, the, the society and the workforce after, you know, being incarcerated. Uh, we, we ran the first expungement project um, through Kimberly Park in, in which 27 of our parents actually had their rights restored because they were able to get nonviolent felonies expunged, uh, connecting our moms to resources that allowed them to go back to school. And right now I'm working in conjunction with Councilwoman Adams to get the slumlords uh, along Cherry Street, either to bring their housing up to code or the city's going to start to find them. So I've been doing this work before I even had aspirations of going to Raleigh. So I want to go to Raleigh to be able to be on the policy side now and to be able to make policy based on my understanding of how decisions in Raleigh is impacting our families here in Winston. Um, so, uh, like my sister said, you know, it's important for us to vote. I, you know, so many people are, you know, turned off by voting, but that's how we got the food in the White House. That's real talk. Uh -huh. And people died for us to have the right to vote. Uh -huh. And so I'm saying, you know, make sure they have their IDs. Make sure that, they, because they don't need the IDs for the primary. And we just got a temporary stay. But we don't know by the time that the uh, general election gets here if they're going to need um, no. ID. So as you're out and about in the community, you know, talk to people, make sure they're registered, make sure they have their IDs. And I'm telling you guys, you know, we got to vote. Oh. Um, we got to hold the people who we send to these offices accountable for doing the work. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, I just wanted to come, show my love, show my support. Um, I'm headed to the um, gala that's honoring Muta Evans, another pioneer in our city, you know, the first woman in the city to own a radio station. And mm. yeah, they moved, you know, they, they forced her out because she was becoming too political and using, you know, the radio yeah. as a platform. But uh, nonetheless, definitely a pioneer in the city. Okay. So I wanted to pay my respects. Hey, Durham, one of my closest friends. 
Huh? Everyone was talking about Pussy Friday. Yeah. Yeah, he actually married. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so he can't, he can't, um, of course he can't. He can endorse, but I understand him not endorsing because in the race that he's in, he needs to keep all his options open. Um, but I did, I talked to him before deciding to run, and so he's ha ha has informed me on some of the work that he's doing, so that I can speak with some intelligence about that. Any questions for me? Okay. You say you were at Kimberly Park. I, yeah, so I, I have been at Kimberly Park for 12 years, and with the new superintendent, she promoted me to the Director of Alternative Education, so I'll be leaving um, to go to Central Office, and what I will be responsible for is overseeing students that are being considered for out-of-school placement, and so it's going to be my responsibility to help build that department to put some due processes in place um, for students and um, work with the schools to make sure that they have better support systems in in place in school other than just looking at out of school placement or placing students in a 45 minute a 45 day placement to AMC. Okay. So um, hopefully the work that I've done in terms of restorative practices and um, finding other ways for students to restitute for their behavior 